And I have no idea if it's in your homework or not, but you're going to see it in the next unit, so might as well go ahead and show it to you. And that is the frequency distribution, mean, and standard deviation, as well as the uh, z-scores, okay? And I really don't know where they have those, so I'm just going to show them to you. I'm sorry, what? Z-scores are? Okay, well, I tried to find the slides, and I couldn't find them. 3.4, it says nothing about Z-scores. Oh, duh. I didn't look far enough. There we go. Good. But that's not what I want. So let me pull up one more thing. While y'all are getting your stuff out, The score shack versus BJ. Alrighty, now I'm going to pull that up later, but right now we're going to talk about frequency distribution. Um, I'm just going to make up one because I don't feel like, let me just go to the spreadsheet because that's the best thing to do. So pull up the handy dandy spreadsheet and I'm going to make up a frequency distribution. And this is kind of like to show you how it's done. I don't know, I don't know if this chapter has any like it, but if we do then that's a good thing. If don't, that's okay too. So let me just make it a little bit bigger for y'all. There we go. Now let's say that we have classes in classes will be here and of course the head count or the frequency will be here and we'll start with 10 to 14. Come on, really? Hold on a second. I'm going to do that so we got to change it. Format sales and I just want to put a text. Let's try that. 10 to 14, 15 to 19, 20 to 24, 25 to third, uh, 29, 30, oops, 30 to 34, and 35 to 39. Let's say these are ages. Make sure I did it right. 10, 14, 15, 19. Subtract each one of them. Class width should be five, I hope. Okay. And two, four, seven, seven, four, and one. Okay, there is a frequency distribution. Now, just like with a table, I mean with a with test scores, you're going to be asked whether it's on my test or whether it's on a standardized test, if 
you know, you can find the mean and the standard deviation. So go ahead and find the mean and the standard deviation of that. I want you to do it without a calculator. I mean, you can use your calculator to, to help, but I don't want you to use your calculator to find the mean and standard deviation. Okay? Don't just press two buttons and find the mean. That's not what I want. I want you to find the mean and the standard deviation of a frequency distribution. And, of course, if you don't know how to do it, that's okay. That's what I'm here for, to show you how to do it. Good gracious, I ain't seen a Motley Crue uh, shirt in a long time. I didn't think y'all even liked bands like that. It's a good band. I've got all their stuff. You like a lot of 80s bands? I do. Do you? I've got like I've got a playlist for, you know, whenever I feel like listening to it. And it's all 80s bands. And a little bit of Leonard Skinner. Got to have Leonard Skinner in there. Five Finger Death Punch. Got to have a little bit, a little bit of variety in there. So, I don't know how many of you know how to do this. I am probably confident in saying probably maybe a third to half the class probably don't know. Okay? And that's nothing unusual because not a lot of people take the mean and the standard deviation of a frequency distribution. So, what do you do? Well, let me pull up the handy dandy whiteboard and I'll show you the formula because that's all it is. You just plug and chug into a formula. So uh, bring it in and there she is. That might be a little blurry because I did have to snip it off the internet. I can't remember. I don't remember seeing it in your book or the homework, but I still want to show it to you because you might see it on a standardized test. So, write it down. Don't worry about the variance. Just write down the standard deviation because nobody's going to ask you for the variance. on a, I mean, all it is, you square the standard deviation. So, Now, the only thing I would suggest that you do is put a bracket. And, I'm, and you know I don't like to write in red. Put a bracket right there because that number has to be a BA number. Why? Because that second number is a BA number, and if the first one's not bigger than the second one, what are you going to get? And what can you not have in a square root or radical? A negative. So if you get the second number bigger than the first number, you know you've done something what? Wrong. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is tell you what's in the formula because some of you may not know. F is the head count. So that's why I put F on top of the column. That's the head count. So F is the head count. And for those of you that don't know where the head count is, that's the right side of the frequency distribution. Okay. N 
is always your biggest number. It's always the total. Total of what? Total of your F. So the only other variable you need to know is what? Not F, but F is fifth count. X. And X is your class midpoint. Or if you want to say mid-range, you could say that. If you want to say midpoint, it's the same formula. So now we can make a table. Or not a table, but... You know how we did the, before we did the x squared and you did the, you know, we're going, I meant not x squared, x minus x bar, and then we did x minus x bar squared. We're going to do that with this, to do this. Okay? So make sure you've got this information down. Again, not that I'm going to test you. I mean, I may throw one on there. It depends on, you know, after I go through and look at the homework, if y'all have had it, then, you know. I'll put it on there, but if you have it, have it. I, I think it's important for you to know how to do this. Okay? Now, why? Because in all cases of sample and population, whether you are presenting to somebody or whether somebody is presenting to you, you need to know the mean and the standard deviation because the mean and the standard deviation tells you if the data is flawed or if it's valid. Okay, depending on if you've got a big spread or small spread or, you know, that type of thing. I can't find the me middle, the median or the middle of a frequency distribution. So I have to go with the mean and the standard deviation. Capiche? All right, so with that being said, and you have to read the formula. Read the formula. How do you find the mean? You take F times X and you multiply it, I mean divide it by, multiply it together, then divide it by N, which is the summation of F. Okay? So you can put an N down here if you want to, and that way it make it easier for you. Or you can say summation of F. So let's go to the spreadsheet. So, we've got to find the midpoint. We've got F. I'm going to change this to F. we got F. So we need what? You got an F Sorry. Email. We need what? Let me shut that down. Well, what's the three variables we need? Y'all just wrote them down, y'all. N. N. And what? X. All right, so we need N. Well, N's real easy. What do we do? Add up, all. Add up all the numbers. So if you miss that on a test, don't what? Don't tell anybody. Well, I can't work that gum. I suck. I can't even do it, so I, I don't want to tell you that. But let me try this again. Summation, not equals. There we go. There we go. Kyle wouldn't get that work. 25. It came out to be a nice number. So let's go ahead and highlight that because that is part of our formula. Okay, now what do we need? We've got F, and I'm going to highlight that green. Let's highlight this green because these are things that we need in our formula. So what's the only letter that we don't have? X. So we're going to put X right here, and we're going to calculate it. Well, before I do that, i got to move. i got to make... I should have done that first. And they will do this for you in the homework. I'm going to insert two columns here. And I'm going to call this the lower class limit and the upper class limit. Now, when you do one of these in the homework and you click the Excel button, the little tab, it will do this for you. Okay, I'm just telling you. Because can I take T 
10-14. Can I take that and calculate it? No. So I've got to break it up into the lower class limit and the upper class limit. So I'm going to put a 10 here. 10, 15, 20, and it'll do it for you, but I'm going to type it in. 30 and 35. And if, you don't, if you're extremely lazy, it'll, like I say, it'll pick it up and do it for you. Oops, there we go. See? Well, anyway, 19. It'll work. 24, 29, and 34, and 39. Everybody with me? And all I did was take the dash out. Okay, now I can do this right here and not have to do it by hand. I can say equals, what's the midpoint? Lower class limit plus the what? Upper class limit divided by what? Now I don't have to calculate each one. I could copy that down or I can take this number and add what? The class width, which is what? Five. And I can copy that down. So however you want to calculate this formula, I mean this, there it is. And now I'm going to highlight that. Uh, magenta, maybe. Maybe a light magenta. How about that? There we go. Ooh. Ooh. Looks like a pink. Heaven forbid. All right. So now... All you got to do is read the what? Read the formulas. Read the formulas and plug and chug. Let's see if I can do this. Insert. Picture. Look at there. Oh my gosh. I need a blackboard and an overhead. There we go. So I want you to find the mean of the standard deviation, I mean the mean of this frequency distribution. Go ahead. You should be able to do that. Just by reading F times X, summation of F times X, divided by N. Everybody should get N. So my son wants to go see Rambo. He wants to go see the last Rambo movie. I think it opens when? Next week? 20th? Any good movies opening? Anybody seen it too yet? How'd you like it? It was funny. It wasn't like scary. Okay, I don't want to go see it then. Scary and funny do not mix. Okay? They try it. They deal with the screen. It just doesn't. I just don't like it. Okay, nobody's going to talk, so fine. Have you seen The Curse of La La Lama? La Mama? That's a scary movie. And she's also in the new Annabelle movie. She's crossing over. Yeah, she's in the Annabelle. Because of the Conjuring crossovers, she's in that movie. The Annabelle movie, the last Annabelle movie was scary. It was good. I like the possession slash haunted houses. I love those movies. <laughs> you like going in haunted houses? No, I don't care nothing about that. That's just trying to make money off people. And you end up breaking your leg running through the house. And no, I don't want to. <laughs> I just like to watch awesome. scary movies, yeah. So hopefully if my son gets out of DSS custody, I'll be able to take him. So, what do we do? we got to have another column. And what's that column called? F times what? F times F. And I take this column and multiply by this column. 
in pink, mate. Anybody, any artist out there? What? What does pink and green make? I'm sorry. Yeah, it does. I figured we had an artist somewhere. Well, we'll, we'll color it something. Burnt orange. How about that? Since Tennessee's getting their tails, we'll, we'll just call it, color it burnt orange. There we go. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because the reason I'm the reason I'm uh, coloring it is I'm going to take my handy dandy whiteboard and no sneezing in class. Um, take my burnt orange highlighter and I'm going to highlight that right there. And now I'm going to go down here. I don't know why it does that. And I'm going to sum that up. And that is the numerator for my mean. And I'm going to highlight that. Aqua. And that is that number right here. Now I do realize that I'm being very explanative here or however you want to split the explanation or whatever. But the reason I'm doing it is because past classes have told me they've never done this before. Okay, that's why now you can go through and type in 2 and 12, 4 and 17, 7 and 20. You can do that in your stat. I'm not going to show you until right before the test how to do it, okay? But, and you can go through and hit second variable, I can't remember, statistic I think it's called, and it'll spit out the mean and standard deviation. Capiche? So, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to put mean is equal to and it's going to be 600 divided by what? And you feel good about yourself. So let's highlight that in a very bright green, meaning that's what you want. And put a big thick border on the outside of it. And that is one of the things that you want. All right, now, tell me what... Oh, I forgot to do something here. I do so much for y'all. Look over there. Okay, there you go. So now you've got the f of x, f times x. There you go. Then you got summation. That's the blue. And then you got... Now, I'm sorry. I can't explain it any simpler than that with the colors. If y'all, if, if, you, if you can find a way to make it simpler, please let me know so I can use it. But I can. And then you can watch this video and rewind it like 50,000 times if you need to rewind it. I don't, I don't know how else to do it. Now, with what we just did, take what we just did and apply it to this one. Now remember what I tell you, put brackets around that first part. And I do that in red because it's very important that you put these two brackets. Why in the Hades? I don't know why they don't do that, but they don't. So go ahead and do it. You're going to have to make two or three more columns. And what are those columns called? You've got F times X. You've got that. So you can, you've got this part right here. Uh, the 600, let me take my handy dandy highlighter. You've got that. I'll go ahead and let's see, you've got the 25. That's a, that's a yellow highlighter. Do we have the 25? 
Yes. We've got the F. What do we call it? F green. That hundred green. So what's the only thing? I was calling the wrong one up there. I'm sorry. I suck. So what's the only thing we don't have? The x squared. So you got to make a column called what? X squared. It's amazing what happens when you read. Read. It's amazing. You know, like handouts and stuff like that. What is it? Yeah, these are two different animals. This is a this is a bobcat and this is a lynx. Two different animals. They look the same, but they're not the same. Dang old tiger and lion. Dang old different. Liger. You know they actually made a liger? Yeah, they've actually made one or created one. Dang old Napoleon Dynamite. You watch Napoleon Dynamite, there's a, two kinds of people. You, one person sits there and looks at it with a confused look on their face. The other person is dying, rolling in the floor laughing. I was one of those, I just I just watch it and laugh. I just, I love that movie. Because there's always Napoleon Dynamite in your high school. Always. I was Napoleon Dynamite. That's who I was. I was Napoleon Dynamite. No. There's always a Napoleon Dynamite. Always. What about, you know how much money they spent on that movie? Like $10,000 and it made millions. Now, I could be off, but, you know, I, th I remember reading either 10, it was in the 10,000s, okay? They just went to somebody's house, somebody that, you know, was on the crew. They just went to that house, and they just used that little town, and it was hilarious. Of course, some of y'all probably think I'm crazy, but I loved it. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Y'all don't talk. Y'all been conditioned. Not to talk, haven't you? Does your other classes here at Tech, they ask you to talk? Well, hell, I just must be crazy. I never could stand when I was in school, quiet classroom. I just couldn't stand it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start because it's not like rocket science. Now, what do you have? Does anybody know what the what what you have to be careful about, especially on the Excel spreadsheet? And you'll see me do it once in a while, picking the wrong column. Okay, no yawning in class. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to say x squared. X. I'm going to go right beside it. How about that? X, I don't know why. Why is the cap lock? X, oh, work. X squared. <clears throat> Some damn Russians. All right, so X is 12, and we're going to raise that to the second power, and we're going to copy that down. And center it because I have OCD about that. It drives me crazy. And why is that one not doing it? There. And delete that one. And I'm going to color this some um, color. Yeah, let's color. Why don't we color it white? Yeah, let's highlight gray. it white. Okay, gray. Doom and gloom. There we go. And do that. 
and go down here and do what? Well, we've got, we can't, we're not, we're not supposed to sum that up. I'm sorry. We've got to go over here and add, we have F times X, but what do we have to add now? F times X, what? Squared. So this is going to be parentheses F times X squared, close parentheses. And remember, pick the right columns. Don't mess up. I do it often, okay? Equals this times this. Now, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to color this one gray, and I'm going to take this one off because I don't need this one. This is not part of the calculation as far as the formula goes. So I'm going to take that highlight off. Because this is the one we need. So now what do we do with F times X squared? What's in front of it? A summation. So we got we got to add it all up. So here we go. And that is the gray part. Only problem is I don't think I have a highlighter of gray over here. No, I don't. So I can't highlight this part. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm sorry, what? How did you get two hundred and eight for the top? F times what? Mm -hmm. So it'd be 144. Two times 144. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, now do I have everything that's in the formula? Yes, let's look. I have N. I have F times X, the blue. And what's F times X squared? 15,400. So now I've got everything I need. Now I want you, now that you've got all the numbers, plug in to the formula and see if you can get the right answer. Why do I say it like that? Because some of you won't get the right answer because you don't know how to plug it in. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean it in a pragmatic way, a realistic way. Okay, so we're going to do it together. But go ahead and see if you can get the right answer. I hope you can. But I know sometimes people don't know how to run the calculator. Except if you're on a calculator drill team in high school. One of the first semesters I taught, I told the students to get their calculators out. And it was a bunch of people right out of high school. And it was like the synchronized drill team. It was like, shh, shh, shh. I was like, good God Almighty. <laughs> And since since I don't want to I don't want to worry about the radical right now, I'm going to call this the variance. Okay. <coughs> yes. Says, do you want me to clear the screen? I don't want to clear the screen. <laughs> Not after all this stuff. Okay. So I'm going to put variance right here, and watch what I do. I'm going to put equals N. I'm going to put that right there. And then this right here goes right beside it. And that is 15,400. 
minus, and I'm going to type in minus right here, and then what is this one? Well, it is the blue, and I'm going to highlight these, so equals this number raised to the what? Second power. So I'm going to do second right there, and I'm going to go back. Hold on. Here we go. I'm going to highlight that blue, highlight this gray, highlight this yellow. And that's going to be put over what? 25? I'll do this one for you. 25 minus 1 is 24. I'll do that one for you. Okay, now you're ready to do the math. So variance, all I did there was what? Plug, plugged and chugged. So what's 25 times? It's going to be a what? A BA number. Is it supposed to be a BA number? Yes, because this one's not going to be small. Minus, I bet it's 36,000, 36, but we'll, we'll go ahead and do it. Equals this raised to the second power. Now, should you look at those two numbers closely? Yes. If this number is bigger than this number, you've done something what? Wrong. Wrong. And divide by this number times what? 24. Times 24. And now I'll just finish it out and then take the square root of it. So the variance is equal to this number minus this number divided by this number. Variance equals this number divided by this number. And then the standard deviation is equal to this number raised to the what? 0.5 power or 1 half power. And that goes right here. And now you have the two numbers that you need. Capiche? Now I want you to I want you to make sure you know how to do that problem in your notes, okay? It's small, I wouldn't give you more than this. Um, but make sure you go over this video, you know, whenever you go home or whatever you get stuck. Make sure you can do two or three of these. Just stick in different numbers. Okay, you don't have to you don't have to change the classes, leave the classes, just change the F, okay? And just do it again. Do it one or two times. And that's all you need. Capiche? Anybody got a question? And notice how I do it. I do it step by what? Step. Not like some of y'all guys. You try to do it in between the blue lines of your notebook paper. Okay? That don't work. All right? Step by step. Now, I'm just curious. Some of you, I know y'all have had probability and statistics in high school. Have you ever seen this before? Yes. Okay, raise your hand if you have. See? Not many people see it. Okay? And that's finding the mean and the standard deviation of a what? Frequency distribution. Capiche? All right, let's get back to the z-score. Let me pull up my handy-dandy whiteboard. And I'm going to bring in a problem. And that problem is the problem that's used all the time in statistics because it's one of the best problems um, 
And of course, our school, when you have a good book, what do you do? You get rid of it. So we got rid of our book that had this problem in it. So we have we have a mentality up here that's if it's bro if it ain't broke, work on it. All right. You don't have to write down word for word, but I guarantee you, you're going to see some kind of question like this on a standardized test. And it will be something like taller, wider, bigger, smaller, or what's the best grade between a psychology class and economics class. Okay? This is called Z scores. I'll give y'all a second to write this one down. Now, any redneck with two teeth in their head can tell you that Shaq is taller than Lyndon Baines Johnson. Okay? I think the tallest, wasn't the tallest president, uh, Lee Lincoln? Yeah. How tall was he? He was like 6'4", 6'6". 6'4", and Alexander Hamilton was like 5'4". He was like small. Not Hamilton. Was it Hamilton? Adams. One of the Adams. Hamilton got shot, didn't he? Yeah, Hamilton got shot because his testosterone level was too high. Yeah. Look up uh at, look up the shortest presidency of his Adams. Of a four five four five five. But yeah, any redneck could tell you Well Shaq's taller. But that's not what the question's asking. James Madison. How tall was he? Five four. Five four. Sorry, I was somewhere in there. All right. Why? What's the question asking? Who is what? Relatively taller. Now, define the word rev relatively. Like in context with what? Good job. Yes, in context. That's all you got to remember. What's the qualifications for being president of the United States? There's only like two. You got to be a natural born citizen and you got to be what? 35 years old or 45, something like that. How, what is it? 35. And of course, you can't have a, you know, you can't murder anybody or anything like that. But what are the qualifications for being a basketball player? No, that's not. Spud Webb, Spud Webb that played with Michael Jordan was 5'5", and he could dunk a basketball. And he played for Atlanta Hawks for like five or six years. What's it called in basketball if you're a six-foot third grader? What's it called? It's not, it's not a requirement. It's a what? No. Well, the, the six-foot third grader. An advantage. Okay? There's a difference between an advantage and a requirement. Okay? So, who's the big fish in the little pond? LBJ or Shaq? Shaq. Oh, LBJ. LBJ because, uh, who was it, Madison? Yeah. Was 5'4". How tall was uh, FDR? He was tall too. Yeah, but what? He was in a wheelchair. He was in a wheelchair. So that doesn't have anything to do with being president. So, so LBJ was a big fish in a little pond. Even though you can't describe Shaq as small, he's a little fish in a big pond. Why? Because it's an advantage to what? Be tall in the NBA. That's called relativity. Relativity. In context. So, when you have, when you're comparing apples and oranges, you got to use Z score. Write that down. When you compare apples and oranges, you have to use a Z score. If I'm comparing a English test to a physics test, as far as the grades, as far as class average and things like that, I've got to use a Z score. The further out you are, the more ER you are. Now, that's not in any book. That's a Hubertism. The further out you are from zero, the more ER, the taller, the bigger, the wiser, whatever you want to say, the ER, the more you are. Now, what is the 
z score formula. Z. Well, that's great. That's really good. Z is equal to x minus x bar over the standard deviation. <coughs> so I want you to plug and chug and find the z score for Shaq and find the z-score for LBJ, who was not one of the best presidents of the United States. Hmm? Hmm. I'm not even going to touch that one. When they have a president they can't control, what do they do? They try to get rid of him. What they do to JFK? What they try to do to Reagan? Try to get rid of him. Mm -hmm. It's all about control. Yes, you have to have a Z score for each one. Now, here is the part that students get confused about. Well, what uh, what 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 numbers? Well, what is this? What is this? So once you get rid of those two things, you know what X is. Okay, so let's look. With a height of 75 inches, Lyndon Bain Johnson was the tallest president. Blah, 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 blah. And then down here, the mean height of presidents is what? So, so for my Z score for LBJ, I'm going to have X bar is equal to 71.5 and the what? S is equal to what? Therefore, the only number left, let me mark this one out, the only number left for presidents is what? So what is that? X. Now I do that for a reason. Some people will look at this. Some people will look at this problem and they'll go, "Oh, oh, it's got all these, got all these words and all these letters, and I don't know what what's what." Well, that's how you do it. You know what this is? That's the mean, and you know what that is? That's standard deviation. So find them two, and the last one is what? Is X. The last one that you don't know is X. So now you plug and chug. So for the Z score for Shaq, what is X bar? What is the basketball? 80. 80. What is their standard deviation? 3. I'm sorry, 3.3. .3. And then X for Shaq is 85. Now it's all plug and one. Plug and chug. So do that, and I'm going to draw a Z table down here. Zero, one, two, negative one, negative two. And we're going to color. We're going to color LBJ red, and we're going to color Shaq. Blue. So, 85 minus 80 over 3.3 and uh, 75 minus 71 over 2.1. So, somebody tell me what LBJ's, what his Z score is. 1. Point what? 1.67. So there is LBJ. <clears throat> Somebody tell me what Shaq's score is. 1.51. 1.51. So who is relatively taller? Shaq. I mean, I'm sorry, LBJ. You're right. Because he's what? He's further out. What's this? What's this area out here called? Unusual and what? Okay, unusual and outlier. 
The closer you are to those two areas, the more what you are, the more ER you are. Okay? So the closer you are, or the further you are from zero, the more ER you are. Capish? Now, that's the only two areas I think I have not covered, except for interquartile range, and that's in the book, and we can go over that when y'all send in questions. But right now, you should be able to do all your homework. Okay? All of it. So everything, chapter 1, chapter 2, well, that's already cut off. Chapter 3, you should be able 3.4 and 3.6 or 3.5 and 3.3. What are the only two sections technically is still open? I'll open it probably. I'll open up Chapter 3. I think I opened it up for another day or two, didn't I? Mm -hmm. I think I did. Okay, so is it still open, Chapter 3? Yes or no? It's still open? Okay, I'll probably open it up. Chapter 3. I'll probably open it up because I know some of y'all still got questions. Questions on this? Send the questions and we'll go over them. Now, look at your outline. What does the outline say the last section is? Which I just covered either one of these because you covered that. Okay? So that means what? Oh, five number summary. That's five number summary. I already covered that. So what does that mean? Okay. So that means, what's today? That means Tuesday, we're probably going to go over the test and homework questions. So that means Tuesday, I'll assign the test. Chances are. Okay? All right, let me call the roll and turn off the do jigger. See how things work? It just works so good and nobody has to worry about, you know. I can't believe nobody's come up to me. When's test? When's test? When's test? When's test? Okay, Mr. Devlin, I'm gonna I'm gonna count you in. You're good to go. See you later, man.